Okay. Uh, I mean, to, to counter this sentiment, uh, Ken and Philip, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary has addressed this. And uh, what Musalim Davidi has said, that we must make sacrifices on matters revenue collection if we are to achieve development in this particular country. Let's listen in. Yes, my, my director has told a little bit. All right, let's go. There is no country that can grow without revenue. No government globally has any resources other than those that it gets through taxation, globally. The pain we are feeling as a nation is because fewer people have been paying tax and the tax money is repeatedly coming back to almost the same people again, yourselves included. So we need to find a way of broadening that base. And to broaden that base, we must make sacrifices. They'll be painful, but I'm seeking your help on behalf of the government of Kenya that let us change this debate. Let us ask people, if you say that you do not like this tax measure, what is your genuine alternative? Because there's a financing gap to be filled. So if my proposition is not good, what is yours? If we need to close a financing gap of 60 billion or 70 billion through VAT, and you say VAT is not right, then you give us the alternative so that we can fill that gap. That is how the debate should be. Well, you give us the alternative. If you're criticizing, what is your solution? And uh, Ken, give us the alternative. If we have uh, a funding gap, uh, we are saying we need to raise more revenue. He's given an example of VAT there, uh, which has a potential of raising uh, close to 60 billion. Uh, what alternative do we have? Okay. Well, Noah, you know, uh, the prime CS, Musalia Mudabadi, uh, was Minister of Finance uh, well over 30 years ago. Um, I'm not sure where you are at that point, <laughs> but he's been around for a long time. And I've always argued that he needs to be the biggest person in the room in terms of economic policy, in terms of planning. He needs to be really, not even at the, at the Kenyan level, he needs to be a global leader in terms of economic thinking. So it's very disappointing uh, when uh, the proposals are being put on the table on heavy consumption taxes. Uh, many times I've said on this show that consumption taxes heavy on VAT only do two things. Number one, it makes life for people at the bottom disproportionately harder. And these are the hustlers who are voting in the administration in great numbers. And number two, it makes the cost of doing business much, much higher. We've said we need to look at more progressive tax policies that are away from consumption, tax policies that support production. So it's quite disappointing when the Prime CS would say we need to make sacrifices when all we are seeing is largesse in yeah. terms of the administration. We're seeing more bigger and bigger budgets for their offices, offices where sometimes the roles have not been um, extremely clear. So I think we do expect more from that particular office. I think it needs to be uh, the beacon of light uh, for the administration, and it really has to step up. Hey. Those are heavy words. The office needs to be the beacon of light and it needs to step up, even in its budget, hopefully, can, you know. <laughs> Do you ask me where I was 30 years ago? That's a good question. <laughs> God knows, <laughs> you know. But uh, still at the same issue, Philip. Because, you know, the, when you listen to Honorable Misaliam Davidi, he says that we keep on taxing the same people. His argument is, how can we tax more people, bring people into the bracket. That's why you see introduction of, you know, new taxes here and there. 
that logic of expanding the tax net, uh, is, it, is it fallacious? Um, really, no, we see a one-sided coin in, in all these affairs. Um, the Prime Cabinet Secretary is lobbying for increasing taxation and, and expanding the, the tax base. And like I mentioned, um, um, another 16 million Kenyans have been invited into the tax bracket by a turnover tax of 3% that has been reduced from a threshold of a million shillings to 500,000, half a million. So basically, Mama Mboga, Boda Boda, that earns uh, an equivalent of 500,000, and you can cal calculate that in terms of just about 1,500 shillings a day uh, times the number of days in a year, then you have to pay 3%. But we are saying this at a time when we have an introduction of a new office called the Prime Cabinet uh, Secretary's Office. But he didn't just come alone. He came together with his spouse. And we saw pomp and color in the launch of an office that belongs to the spouse of the Prime Cabinet Secretary. What, what a time to live in Kenya. So the person making the sacrifice mm -hmm. is me and you, but the person enjoying the sacrifices, the toil and the sweat of Kenyans yeah. is the, the CS and his spouse for that matter. We have, you know, a ridiculous uh, uh, story of, you know, an attempt to introduce the office of the, of the first daughter for that matter. And the president had to come strong to deny that when he had the interview with the, you know, the media houses. So, we are simply wasteful, as the chair of the Economic uh, Council for uh, the President says, uh, Dr. Ndi, that we are a wasteful government. Government is wasteful on mm -hmm. a daily basis, and the alternative is only one. Provide guardrails okay. for the citizens, but ensure that austerity measures, if the citizens are tightening their belts, the first to tighten the belt is the government. So much so that we don't see overspending, we don't see expanded government, we don't see unnecessary offices, we don't see unnecessary tours, we don't see an expanding uh, state house budget on a daily basis for matters that we could well do without. All right. And uh, one of the biggest issues that uh, 